American soccer has long been derided as little more than kickball. While we have a large number of players, we have produced relatively few truly outstanding players compared to much smaller countries. There are a lot of reasons why we lag behind other countries, including a lack of infrastructure and a poorly developed soccer culture. We don't have generations of players who have grown up with the sport. In our recreational programs, our parents are often transplants from other sports that are primarily coach-centered like football and baseball. They try to employ the same coaching strategies in soccer, and it doesn't translate well to the player-centered game of soccer. As a director of coaches, I struggled for years just to get parents to volunteer with my youngest age groups. When I did get them to volunteer, they didn't have any idea what to do with the kids during a training session or during the game. I tried to focus on coaching education and gameplay as ways to get around the problem, but with little success. Several years ago, I adopted the practice and play model from our U4 program for the U5 and U6 age group. I would run a large group training session twice a week. I did the training, and then we divided up into teams and the coaches ran the games. A standard curriculum for all players and consistent training methods improve the quality of play, but the players still struggle with solving problems like, how do I change direction when I'm facing the wrong goal, and how do I dribble around an opponent? The transfer from the training to the games was not rapid or consistent. To improve transfer, I came up with a pinky promise. Before, during, and after practice, and during the games, I would ask the players to give me the pinky promise. I would say, I promise to, and they would say, show my skills while holding up their pinky. In every session, we demonstrated the appropriate skills to solve the problems that the children faced. Since new players love to kick the ball as hard as possible, and that's sort of the opposite of the show my skills promised, I added a second part to the pledge, the finger wag. The finger wag means we never kick the ball away. So now the whole pinky promise goes, I promise to show my skills and never kick the ball away. I also needed to give coaches something to do other than constantly shout out directions about what to do during games. So I gave them some phrases to use like show your skills and find the ball. This reduced the amount of yelling that the kids got and helped to reinforce our skills focus yes. message. Yes. Another technique to reduce the amount of information coming from the coaches was to have them simply say yes, yes. when they saw a player using skill so that he or she yes. knew when the coach had seen that the child had used skill. Between the training, the games, the pinky promise, and the coach feedback, player development has accelerated in this age group. These techniques have also helped us with our player retention, so players are staying longer in our program. If you want more information, check out my model training sessions and our two different game modes, Dribble In and New Ball, for some other ideas on how to run effective sessions for the U5, U6 age group. Thanks for watching. Your feedback helps me do a better job. For more information about the Pinky Promise and to find out more about how to be a better coach for the U5 and U6 age group, please visit my website at gamewithinthechild.blogspot.com. There you'll find multiple resources to help you become a better coach.